the judge in Texas issuing his ruling, did he get it legally correct? Well, I would say no. Um, but, you know, we're still at the preliminary injunction stage. So all he said so far is that the states that are challenging this immigration action have a likelihood of success on the merits. Immigration. It is either the way America was built and will be built, as we have the collective natures of so many people, to this nation of opportunity. Or it is a policy that at the moment endangers America and opens this country and its citizens to some of the most dangerous people on the planet. Now, that all sounds very simplistic and easy to understand, which is why anyone putting the debate on only those terms may have zero idea what they're talking about. The federal district judge in Texas has spoken. The president's immigration plan is on hold, and the discourse goes up yet another notch. All right, so let's get to it. Welcome to Midpoint. He is co-director of the Dream Action Center, also an attorney who cannot practice legally in America as he is still undocumented. Cesar Vargas joins us. And she is the Director of Policy Studies for the Center for Immigration Studies, Jessica Vaughn. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. Thank you for Thank inviting you. us. All right, Cesar, I'm going to come to you first, honestly now, with what happens here. Do you want to say to Jessica and the other people who agree with this and say, guys, go ahead, no worries, we got this, you can complain all you want, but this is going to go through. I mean, it really seems as if some people on the left want to say, stop bothering us and go away. You know, I'm not here to point fingers like they do in Washington, D.C. I'm not here to say Jessica, you know, shouldn't be advocating her position. But what I am saying here is that the law is on the side of these programs. And the fact that over 11 American presidents since Eisenhower, Ronald Reagan, Republicans have taken similar action uh, on this shows that the law is on our side. So at this point, we're not surprised by the injunction because it is a conservative Republican judge. But we are moving ahead to ensure that this programs go into effect. All right, Jessica, let's get to you. And again, as Cesar said, everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their side on this matter. But still, it comes down to that. There are many people on the left saying, let it go, walk away, because these people who don't think it's real, don't think it's legal, they're going to lose sooner or later. So how do you answer that? Well, I would say, you know, that would be foolhardy and unfair uh, to keep leading people on until there is a definitive ruling on this. Uh, I mean, they, they can't really say that this program is going to go ahead in, unless they win some kind of stay of the judge's injunction or an appeal in uh, from a panel of judges in the Fifth Circuit. I mean, it, right now, the, the president's program is in the hands of the federal court system and also to a certain extent in the hands of the U.S. Congress, which may possibly still decide not to provide the president with funding to carry it out. So there, this is, this is really being fought on two fronts now. Cesar, in many ways, don't you actually think to yourself that maybe this is a good idea? Go ahead, because those of you who are in favor of what the president is doing, you would say, let all the legal challenges get out there. Try everything you want. Let's go ahead and we'll defeat it like that. Then again, that could take years for this to actually happen. No, and I think uh, it's, it's perfect, right? That's what we, we are battling two fronts. We are in the congressional side, but also in the courts. But most important, Congress hasn't done anything, has failed to do their constitutional duty to pass any type of modern, modernization of our immigration system. But the court at this point is about protecting the families that have legal support at this point. So we're, we're actually very encouraged that the Court of Appeals and even the Supreme Court will allow this to move forward and will uphold the president's executive action on immigration and its broad discretion on this. Jessica, is it fair to say, i got about a minute left before we take a break, but the one thing that maybe both sides can agree on is, as I pointed out in the open, the president's to blame for this. Congress is to blame for this. Lawmakers are to blame for this. This is an absolute mess. So isn't it fair for both sides to be able to look at the people at Congress, the people in Washington, and say, get off your seats and get something done here and basically stop screwing around with Americans? No, I don't, I don't think that's really? fair at all. I think in, in this situation, the president has clearly overstepped the bounds of his authority. And just because the Congress doesn't pass what he wants doesn't mean that Congress is, is doing something wrong. Well, but the Congress acting. isn't passing anything. I think that's the point I'm, I'm getting to here. Everybody has this mired in a mess right here and has been for decades. Well, well 
Uh, you know, there has, have been lots of immigration bills passed in the 20 years that I've been involved in this issue. The, the key is that most of them are not huge, comprehensive, try to do everything immigration bills. And that's where um, the advocates for amnesty have always gone off the rails, is that they try to do too much. We've Congress has passed a lot of immigration be- bills. The most successful ones tend to be narrowly focused and trying to address one aspect okay, of the problem. Okay, hold on there and, one second, Jessica. We have House to take a break. Is. I'm going to come right back and we'll pick it up right there. Let's continue the immigration debate right now. And also let's talk about others coming to American shores as well when we continue right here on Midpoint. Let's get back to work with the Director of Policy Studies for the Center for Immigration Studies, Jessica Vaughn, and the co-director of the Dream Action Center, Cesar Vargas. Cesar, what Jessica had said just before we took the break there, and she is right, there have been many other bills, many other focus bills, legislation that has been passed for many years regarding immigration. When you hear that, though, do you basically see that as a stalling tactic by the right? I mean, because they are, in essence, correct. They have at least tried But some people will say that nobody is really trying here, and maybe this is all just about holding the president up as long as they can. Well, simply, Jessica, and even the Center of Immigration Studies with FAIR and other organizations are wrong. When there's approaches and when there's actually been uh, an effort by Republicans and Democrats to do piecemeal legislation, uh, you know, the Center of Immigration Studies and other organizations like them, you know, and completely oppose any type of action. So not only is she wrong to saying that, you know, the the fact that, the president doesn't have the authority, and you know now she's saying that they, he clearly exceeded. She does not back it by legal authority. Okay, now wait a minute. You just said completely oppose any type of action. You, you didn't mean any type. Did you mean everything they oppose? They oppose pretty much, other than simply c- shutting down our borders, shutting down every type of immigration. You know, I think that's that's really their approach that have been, and okay. that's, the, that's the effort that they okay. have. Okay, let me let Jessica answer that right now, Jessica, because you heard the accusation. No, of course not. I mean, we would support reforms that are constructive and that are in the country's interest rather than in the interest of certain special um, interests that are trying to get laws changed to suit them. I mean, I think Congress needs to look at what benefits the country as a whole. I would definitely support an overhaul of our immigration laws, but I'm sure the result of that would be different than um, what Mr. Vargas would like to see happen. But really, the first thing that needs to happen is the Congress needs to block the president's over executive overreach and what he tried to do beyond his authority. Then they need to look at enforcement and make sure that we are actually enforcing the immigration laws that we have, tweak them in ways where they need to be tweaked, and then we can move on to a discussion of, and make sure that those improvements are actually working. Then we can look at our immigration system as a whole would you agree, and though, Jessica, that we where could, it needs to would be Would you agree, Jessica, that we can do all these things at once? Because what we're always talking about here, it seems like it's going to take years and years and years and more years. Well, it doesn't make any sense to talk about reforming uh, our legal admission system if the rules aren't going to be enforced anyway. Right now, we have a president who's essentially said that he doesn't want to enforce even the laws we have. Okay, Cesar, I'm going to throw it to you now on that because she is right in that in many instances. The president does not want to enforce certain laws. Well, the president has discretion, just like every prosecutorial office in the U.S., whether it's local, state, and federal, has the discretion whether to pursue uh, either you know, a terrorist or pursue a student. Like, for example... But what about the laws, though, Cesar? We're talking about laws here that are in place right now. There shouldn't be any ambiguity there. But the, the reality, the, there is no ambiguity, but there is discretion to say, for example, as Jessica said, I'm sure she would agree to pursue someone who has committed violent cr- crimes versus myself. If, you know, does Jessica agree that, you know, I've been here since I was five years old. I've gone to law school, you know, pay taxes. You know, I want to be able to be, have an opportunity to be a, to serve my country in the military and be and contribute. So, you know, is she opposed to that? Is is fair? Is Republicans opposed to that? Or do we want nothing at all? Cesar, let me just, uh, I, I'm short on time, but again, have you attempted, to, have you tried to become a citizen? Absolutely, but there is no way, there is no line. So, so when people say there's go back of the line, well, there is no line for me to do so. There is okay. no line for me to All apply. All right, Jessica, let's go ahead and get to that then. Is it fair to say that there are people such as Cesar who are continue throwing, they're continually thrown back to the line and there's no way for them to get up to the front? To say that there's no line is, is just flat out wrong. There are more than 4 million people in the world 
who have a family member sponsoring them for a green card to the United States or an employer sponsoring them to come. We admit 20,000 some more people without sponsors. The, the problem is that Congress, for, for Cesar, is that Congress has decided that it does not want to open the opportunity of a green card to people like him at this point. We have, we accept more than a million legal immigrants a year. That's the most generous immigration policy in the world. And I, I think it needs to be revised a little bit. But to say that, you know, we're somehow lacking in immigration or lacking in opportunities for people to come here from other countries is just flat out wrong. 15 seconds, and, and Cesar, would, your I, answer, your response. You know, back in the early 19th century, the, the Italians were called WAPs, right, without papers. You know, so the fact that there is people here with undocumented status is absolute reality. And that is why we're not telling President Obama, hey, Mr. President, Congress overstep Congress authority because they are acting that. The fact is we want a congressional solution. We want to be able for Congress, for Republicans and Democrats, to deal with this issue at this point. And okay. we can because there we go. We're gonna to have to call it right there to be only fair because that was your twenty seconds on that. We are out of time, unfortunately, but I tell you what, we have actually opened up a good discourse here. And this is something that we need a little more time. We're gonna to have to spend more time on it because there's a whole lot of information and misinformation that is passed back and forth constantly. Cesar Vargas and Jessica Vaughn, I want to thank you both for being here. We'll do it again. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, take care. The Veterans Administration continues to pile on promises. Meet one person who thinks they're actually piling on something else. It's when Midpoint continues.